For three and a half years, the Biden administration has worked relentlessly to suffocate American energy production, both onshore and offshore. And when Senate Republicans offered amendments to restore some modicum of sanity to the system for promoting and permitting and leasing new energy development, every single Senate Democrat stood behind the administration and voted no. The first and longest suffering victims of Washington Democrats' war on American energy are the American people. Historic inflation has already made insuring a car or filling up the tank more than 50% more expensive on President Biden's watch. But his administration wants to compound the pain with regulations that would put entire sectors of our economy in an even more serious bind. Back in March, the Biden administration finalized a rule on vehicle emissions that would give manufacturers of work trucks and commercial vehicles until 2032 to turn 40 percent of their new stock into zero, zero emission vehicles. In the case of the biggest long haul tractor trailers, this would effectively mean replacing a quarter of these vehicles with zero emission vehicles that are not yet on the road. It doesn't take an expert to imagine the sort of shockwaves this would send across America. Our economy simply cannot function without reliable large vehicles to get products to market or the hardworking men and women who make a living driving them. We're talking about a rule that would supercharge inflation on delivery costs and shelf prices alike, and a penalty that would hit hardest for those least able to afford it. Unsurprisingly, this zeal for red tape extends beyond heavy-duty vehicles to every passenger car, SUV, and pickup truck. In eight years, if the administration had its way, two of every three vehicles manufactured for American consumers will have to be electric vehicles. Now, consumers have already made it abundantly clear that they don't want Washington bureaucrats telling them what car to drive. And major engines of our economy have joined together to take the Biden administration to court over all of this nonsense. Folks in my home state of Kentucky are following this progress closely. I spoke recently with a car dealer from Richmond. When it comes to his livelihood, he doesn't mince any words. Here's what he had to say. I don't want to be in court fighting a government agency. I just want to sell and service the cars and trucks that my customers want. Right now, and for as long as I can see, my customers don't want vehicles that our government requires them to buy. They don't want vehicles that are not affordable, can't be reliably recharged, and can't be depended upon to make the drive from Richmond to Lexington on a below zero midnight in January. He also said the history and civics classes that I dearly loved did not prepare me for a country where executive action and career bureaucrats can create law and regulations that will put me out of business. Boy, I can't top that. American workers and job creators are struggling to keep up with persistent, persistent high prices. And all the Biden administration seems to be offering as consolation is more red tape. 